<laughs> Look here, I done told y'all about giving these hood Negroes brown liquor because it's either one or two things gonna happen. Either they gonna be fighting or they finna be <laughs> favorite favorite auntie i'm here and i'm back with a late ass review <laughs> this is marriage boot camp y'all season 15 episode 2 drama said knock you out y'all this episode it was good i give it to him it was good i was finna talk crap that's only because i've been drinking a little bit already and before we get into the review y'all already know church announcements go on subscribe to my channel let me know you came by let your mama and them know, share me out, all of that. Just do that for me, because I showing up there appreciate you. Look here, y'all. This episode was good. I still don't like tampon. I don't like tampon E. She gets on my dog or nerves. I'm going to out her ass sometimes. But I'm ready to give y'all this review. So hopefully, um, see, we let's just go on and get in the damn review, y'all. I can't. See, y'all, it's the next morning. Everybody in the house, they just now waking up. Tahiri and Vado, they still arguing. Tahiri mad over the fact this nigga called her thirst bucket just the, the night before. She's still mad over that. They laying in the bed, kind of, you know, arguing, whatever. Willie and Shonda, they laying in the bed, and they upset about the fact that they in this room with all this text messaging and shit on the wall. Hey, yeah, yeah, you niggas was out there doing what you was doing, so you came to marriage boot camp, so you got goddamn face the fucking facts. So they upset about being in a room with, with the text messages and all of that on the wall. But y'all, at the end of the day, ain't that one of them niggas going nowhere. Shonda, you gonna be with him. Willie, you gonna be with her. Y'all still gonna cheat and you still gonna forgive each other. It is what it is. Y'all niggas just need to cheat and peace and be fine with it. Cause that's just what y'all gonna do any goddamn way. Tahiri asked Phaedra when they end up going downstairs getting a little breakfast or whatever. When you gonna get that nigga some cutty? You know he want to. What's the problem? What you waiting on? Phaedra say this nigga got to pay a deductible on their puss. I ain't mad at her. I ain't mad at her. You got to put some kind of down payment down and let me know that I can give it to you. If not, I'm just not going to be able to do it. I ain't mad at her for that. Um, Tony's still mad, child. Tony is one mad ass blazing. She just mad. I'm telling y'all, she got hot sauce. Soy sauce, <laughs> a Ginsu knife, sea salt, and lemon juice all in her goddamn bag. She mad as hell. Dr. Ish comes in, and he wants everybody to write down the resentments that they have towards their partner in their relationship, right? They all geek to do this. You know, they like, I could, I think they had to write down like five resentments that they had towards each other. Women like, I can do this all goddamn day. Vado resents uh, the, the wall that Tahiri has up. Tampon E resents the fact that she wants a man and not a little boy that she got a goddamn race. Corrupt says he resents the fact that Tony won't listen. Tony resents the fact that nigga, first of all, you fell off the wagon. And then secondly, she say you let people come in your house and steal shit. Nigga, what? You mean to tell me you not only get drunk and do the crazy shit you do, you let your homeboy and your kinfolk and them coming up in here stealing my goddamn lighters and iPhone charges and shit because you know if it ain't nothing else, niggas is good for stealing. They good for stealing iPhone charges and lighters. Why I got to put up with your goddamn people and them coming here taking my shit because all of y'all done came in here and got drunk because you done fell off the goddamn wagon. You know how sick and tired I am going out here and buy goddamn lighters and charges from the corner store? Because your people done stole my shit. I'd be mad as hell goddamn too. Davon says he don't like the way that she comes at uh, Tampon E comes at him with attitude all the goddamn time. He said he's like, I am a man. I'm not a boy. God damn it. Yes, you are. You her boy. Women say he is sick and tired of Shonda's attitude. And of course, Shonda's sick of you cheating all the time. Little nasty dick. Nigga, that's just what y'all. Y'all just need to keep y'all's. Just cheating peace and love on each other. Because like I said, y'all ain't going nowhere. Y'all ain't going nowhere. So y'all, they go outside and the stage is set up for the rap battle. Y'all already know how they do. Each couple got to go back and back, you know, head to head with their little rap battle. They try, 
this motherfucker tampon E gonna come in there and say, I were, I was ready. You know, the stage is like my second home. Shut your dumb ass up. You ain't even got no hits out. I can't stand and tampon the and she just further solidified why I don't really care for her in this goddamn episode here. We finna get into it though. Tahiri and Vado go first. They had a little bop or whatever. It was cute. Tampon E and Devon go. She was whack as hell. Whack like I knew she would be whack. Devon did kind of good though. You know what I'm saying? You know, he, he kind of grabbed his nut, you know, nuts when he was saying his little rap or whatever. Then Tampon E make this little statement about prenup. Everybody like, ooh. Oh, oh, she got the nigga. No, she didn't. Uh, nigga, shut your dumb ass up. Lily and Shonda was next. They did good. I thought both of them did good. She had a nice little flow to her little rap, whatever she did. Hands down, the best one, though, was Medina. Phaedra had a little bop to hers, too, but Medina's was good. He had a little flow to it. Look at how clean and short. And it's all like, oh. <laughs> Hey, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, whatever, whatever. Tony and Corrupt was last. Now, everybody thought, okay, this nigga Corrupt finna get out here. He finna wreck some shit. This nigga was a part of DPG was snooping him. He finna come and drop bars on this bitch. He was drunk, first of all. Sec, he was whack. He didn't make no sense. I chopped that up to the fact that he's older. You know, he can't come out with rhymes off the dome. You know what I'm saying? Because he's older and he drank a lot. Y'all gave this nigga that brown liquor. I'm telling y'all, the brown liquor, you, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Tony's rap, basically, she was just cussing this nigga out over a hip-hop beat. Fuck you, you get on my motherfucking nerves and you ain't gonna do shit cause you ain't gonna be shit and they come in and they stealing my iPhone charger and my lighters and I hate you fucking motherfucker. That's all she was saying. She was just cussing this nigga out over a beat. Making her own little low bop to it. I'm like, all right, she mad. Now afterwards, y'all, everybody is over by the pool and they chilling right now. Vado is laid out on another little part that's, you know, away from kind of where the group is. Everybody sitting back chilling. Next thing you know, Tahiri kind of unbuttons her, her jacket that she got on and kind of takes it out. Phaedra and Tony's face when she did this shit was like, oh, like, but you know what? Phaedra love a little TNA. She always get excited when it comes to titties and ass. I ain't mad at Phaedra. You do you, boo-boo. But Hazel Lee is then like, because when Tahiri took the jacket off and unzipped it, she said she was finna get ready to take it off because she was hot. She had a little bralette. A little boosty, boosty caca. That's what Selena Daddy said. The little boosty caca. She had that on right there, and her little titties or whatever kind of popped out. Now, like I said, Phaedra and Tony Face is like, ooh, bitch, like, what is you doing? Okay. Hazel Tampon E was like, what is you doing? You can't just pop your titty out in front of everybody, man. Like, what the hell is going on? Now, pause for the cause. I understand where Tahiri was, I mean, where Tampon E was coming from. What I didn't like is the little slick shit she said. That's exactly what Vado got a problem with right there. Now, bitch, you overstepping your boundaries with that. Now, like I said, on one hand, I understand what she's saying. Like, dang, you know, out of respect for other people's men, don't necessarily pop the titties out, have it out there for them to display to look at. But then again, at the same time, yo nigga... Supposed to know what he can and can't look at. If the nigga got strong peripherals, he can at least be respectful of you and look at the bitch with her peripherals. My husband, he know better. Mm -mm. I think Hazel Lee was more worried about Davon, her little boy, looking at, at uh, Tahiri. Because, you know, Tahiri got a whole lot of ass. Not a lot of titties, but she got a whole lot of ass. And so she worried about... You know, Davon may be catching that eye, ah, whatever. This is the thing. You you want to train him like he your son. You train that nigga not to look nobody. Now, I'm not saying I trained my husband. No, I didn't train him because he's not no goddamn dog. What I'm saying is he knows you're not finna look at no other and disrespect. I don't give a damn if she's standing right next to him butt naked doing a handstand with a pink tutu on skates with sparklies on the end of them twirling around singing Yankee Doodle Viva Las Vegas. He don't not to fucking look over there. That's just that on that because of that. I'm just saying. They kind of get into it or whatever. Next thing you know, to hear it was like, I ain't got a problem with you. You ain't got no damn pants on, which is true. She was dressed like a, <laughs> she on a big ass onesie. That damn face just started going in on her. She said, yeah, girl, looking like Roddy, Roddy Piper. <laughs> like you finna be the next women's WWE champion. 
That damn Hazel Lee gets pissed off, immediately goes and runs to Votto and tells Votto what happened. Bitch, what? That's another reason why I got her. Like Tahiri said, she run around there starting a whole lot of shit, but want to act like she ain't goddamn did nothing. This nigga Votto then gets pissed off, which again, to an extent, Hazel Lee had a point. But again, Bitch, it's not what you said, it's how you said it, how you approached the game with it. I don't like how she did it, therefore she was fucking wrong, and she should have minded her goddamn business. Point blank, period. So the next little exercise they had to do was this, um, was them breaking down the wall of resentment. All the little statements that they had, you know, the resentments that they had towards their partner was now up on this wall and they had on like construction hats, hammers, and they had to go and hit the words that they want to break through or the statements or whatever that they made that they want to break through, right? Everybody had a good and old time banging out frustration on the goddamn walls or whatever, right? Next thing you know, it comes to Tony and Corrupt. Once again, this nigga corrupt is drunk. <laughs> Full of that irking jerk. You know what I'm saying? Not a good goddamn combination. Tony gets up there. She starts banging the wall. And once again, she's cussing because she's mad. She's always goddamn mad. This nigga corrupt said he feels like four. <laughs> That's how he said it. And he got to let out how he feel. This nigga takes off his glove. Winds back and throws the hammer at the dog on wild. Next thing you know, goddamn producers come out like, hey man, we told your goddamn ass not to do that. See, nigga, yo, listen. No more for this nigga. He can't play no goddamn more. Put his ass in goddamn time out. Dr. Ish had to calm this nigga down. I had to pull him to the side afterwards. It's like, look here, nigga, look here. Um, I know you an alcoholic or whatever. You like to get full of that irk and jerk and that yak or whatever. But while we here, can we make a compromise? I done told y'all before. Look here. Brown liquor. <laughs> it, <laughs> it ain't good. I done told y'all that. Give me a little vodka, a little tequila. I'm here with it. I'm here with it all night. We, I'm here. We can have a good ass time. Bitch, you give me on that brown liquor. I need to go find that hoe. Where that bitch was she had said. Cause I don't like what she had said and when she said it. I don't even know who that hoe is, but I'm looking for her. Come on now. But I do like how Dr. Ish was like, look here, can we at least trade the brown liquor for beer? I ain't expecting you to quit cold turkey because I don't want you going postal in this motherfucker. But let's make a compromise, which I get him because we often have to make compromises with my patients. Y'all know I work with the, the, the uh, homeless community and we've often had to make compromises like, look here, I know you can't function without your beer. We're going to be here at 10. Can you go ahead and get you one in by 930? So 10, when you see us, foul, we're going to be ready to roll. They're like, all right, cool. If I'm like, I need to draw your blood first thing in the morning, you can't be drinking. What time you gonna crack that first 211 open and I come meet you before that, get your blood, boom, boom. That's how you gotta do it. Now I respect Dr. Ish for that. He already know, he like, look here, I don't, I don't, I don't want no problems, but my nigga, you can't be on that brown liquor no more. You got white folks watching you. No, we can't, uh-uh. Now Vado and Tahiri, um, Vado ends up going back to Tahiri and telling Tahiri everything that Tampon E told him. And of course, rightfully so, Tahiri got pissed off. Don't be coming at me sideways over some shit that another bitch done said, especially a bitch you know I don't too much care for. I don't give a damn what she said. Don't come to me sideways over something somebody else said. If she had a problem or whatnot, she could, she... Address what well, she did address her about it. I get that, but bitch, still, you don't run to my nigga like you goddamn tattle telling us some shit. Cause then me and you definitely gonna have a problem. And if my nigga come at me sideways, me and him gonna have a problem. And me and you gonna have a bigger problem. Cause now I got a problem with him of some shit that you got a problem with. You feel me? And now everybody got a goddamn problem. So afterwards, y'all, they all chopping it up with um, Judge Toller. She coming there dropping that straight knowledge like she always do. Make Willie little punk ass cry. He needs to cry. God damn it. They said to him, your daughter is going to get a nigga just like you. He started crying because he already know, damn, I'm a fuck nigga. I'm a fuck boy. I got to change my ways. I don't want my daughter with a nigga like me. Yeah, change your goddamn shit up. Afterwards, y'all, Judge Toller tells them that she wants them, all the ladies to get the, together and all the men to get together so that they can get, um 
constructive criticism from their peers on what they feel like the issues are in their relationships and things that they could goddamn probably need help with, which was probably not the right time being that Tahiri and Tampon E already got issues. And of course, Tampon E is like, well, I really just want to, you know, let Tahiri know that, you know, this is the reason why Vado got a problem with you because you're doing this and this and whoop de whoop and yada, yada, yada. And your man don't like that. Again, like I say, bitch, mind your business, mind your neck for you get cut that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? And like Phaedra said, don't come to nobody else's man in their business or whatever telling them what another female done said. Y'all got bigger fish to fry. You trying to figure out if you love this nigga, you want this nigga, you going to stay with this nigga or not. What is you going to goddamn do? So y'all, later on that night, Tampon E, I think Vado, Tahiri, and Corrupt, they all downstairs, they drinking, dancing, having a good time. Niggas ain't got no radio, they ain't got no phones. I mean, I think they do got their phones, they ain't got no TV or nothing. They All they can do is eat, smoke some weed, and drink or whatever. So they down there having a good time. Child, Tony come bring her mean ass downstairs, mean, mad ass, mad all the goddamn time. She goes up to Corrupt and well, really to the rest of the group and be like, look here, I know y'all don't understand that this nigga got disease. He got a problem with that yak, that brown liquor. I don't need y'all up here influencing him, which I don't think they were influencing him. He's a grown ass man. He grown enough to probably be all that goddamn daddy in there. You can't get on other people. I understand where she's coming from. You know, he's an alcoholic and you don't want him to be influenced to drink even more. But at the same time, they was going to drink any goddamn way. He a grown ass man and was going to drink any goddamn way. They just so happened to be down there at the same damn thing, doing the same damn, t same damn time, doing the same damn thing. You feel me? It's too many of these. And so she got mad, went up to Corrupt, told us, nigga, you need to eat and go to bed. Corrupt was like, see, that's a reason why I got a problem with your motherfucking ass in the first place. Because she steady. She pissed off. I ain't seen this bitch smile one time. Not a one time since they been there. Y'all. That whole, that relationship is bad. It's bad. Corrupt, sick of this shit. I'm sick of it too. I just want to see the bitch crack a smile. Bitch, you look so much better when you oh, oh, oh. I'm telling you, you will. But look at y'all. That was a review. If it was anything that I missed, y'all already know. Drop it down below. Let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share all that good shit. And your Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out.